Welcome back for more Cannon Fodder Catch-Up. Today we'll be looking at the latest issue from October 30th. Minor Halo 5 spoilers ahead in case you haven't played it yet. Let's dive in. We open with a series of mentions for some of the video content that premiered during Halo 5 Live, an event I'm sad to say I missed. The first is a primer that fills in the gap between Halo 4 and 5. It's short, concise, and does what it sets out to do. I would personally prefer one that fills in more details, but let's be honest, what have people really missed from the Escalation series? After that, we get a video roundtable and two behind-the-scenes features, one on the game and one on the Fall of Reach animated series, a series we're going to talk about in the near future because I have some words to share. The main article comes to a close with a few answered questions from the community. The first one asks about Mark 7's placement in the Mjolnir timeline. In Halo 4, the description of Mark 6 armor notes that this was the last mainline variant fielded before Gen 2, which has led to a little confusion on where Mark 7 fits in the development timeline. Basically, is it Gen 1 or Gen 2? It certainly has some features that are fairly unique to Gen 2, such as integrated thrusters, but regardless. Well, according to Grimm, Mark 7 is essentially Gen 1, but it was never really cost-effective to produce at scale. However, technologies originally developed for the Mark 7 platform have been integrated into the Gen 2 program. The closest Gen 2 armor variant to the Mark 7 platform is one known as Decimator, a hereto unheard of variant that is mostly unknown outside of the Spartan Special Forces community. I wonder if that's a variant featured in Halo 5, or something we'll see in the future. Next up is a question about Julem Dama's service record during the Covenant War. Sadly, Grimm can't give us many details, only that he was a shipmaster on the ORS heavy cruiser, Blight of the Profane, during the last third of the Covenant War. It still amazes me how little we know about Jewel, considering he was a main character, or at least a prominent one, in both Halo Glasslands and Halo the Thursday War. But I guess it's kind of pointless now. God damn it. After that, we have a question on whether the Spartan branch has its own vehicles and ships. They don't, but rather have arrangements with the Marines and Army to utilize assets on an as need basis and the Navy for interstellar deployment. There's a last question, but I think it's best experienced for yourself. That brings to a close the main article and moves us on to the new universe entries. This time we have the former UNSC colony of Meridian, the T-57 Plasma Bolt Launcher or Plasma Caster, and the Z-1800 Exoatmospheric Multirole Fighter or Phaeton. We start off with Meridian, a colony visited in Halo 5 and one that you can actually learn the history of from the intel found in the game. Meridian, a large moon of the gas giant Hestia V, was founded in 2431 by mostly French colonists, the first town being named Avignon after a city in France. Much of its early history is filled with strife. From early debates on the development of the planet, to political and ideological movements such as the Free Patriot Movement of 2457 and the Sundered Legion of 2495. In 2548, the colony found itself under Covenant attack, the alien hegemony recognizing the moon's importance to the UNSC. Thanks to the colony's impressive air force and an extensive orbital defense grid, the local UEG forces managed to hold off the invasion forces for three years. However, by 2551, the colony finally fell and was glassed. And, as we know, the Prophet of Regret found a very special luminary there. Imagine what might have happened if he had found the other hidden artifact. The Rig, a map in Halo 5, is based on a mobile mining platform that scours the surface of Meridian. Next up is the Plasma Caster. Though it saw limited use during the Covenant War, it only really came into widespread use during the Sunghili Civil Conflict. Produced by the merchants of Kikos, the weapon has largely gone unchanged in the century since its inception. Finally, we have the Phaeton, a small weapon ship employed in the billions during the Forerunner Flood War. Piloted by Armager soldiers, a single Forerunner warrior could command thousands of Phaetons at a time. Most were destroyed during the war, their remains forming debris rings around shattered worlds and dead fleets throughout the galaxy. Guardians were traditionally assigned wings of Phaetons, and new vessels have been grown to bolster surviving wings and an ever-growing army of reconstituted and reshaped Promethean constructs. And that does it for today. Thank you for your patience as always. With Halo 5 finally out the door, hopefully I won't miss out on any more of these or other videos going forward. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.